can hardly even tell when I pin it. It's like, okay, ready, set, go. Yeah, I've been wondering what this was. It's like a retaining wall structure and then there's a hole that was designed obviously in the roof. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Impact Moto. Today we're on the 690. Jonathan brought the Africa single and we're swapping bikes to see how the other one rides. <sighs> I'm gonna put these 27 horses to good use. What do you think about it? Oh, you have no bottom end torque. Okay. I just put your hazards on. There we go. Okay, I have to use the throttle. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I killed it again. <laughs> you actually have to tell it. I'm trying to leave now. <laughs> oh my gosh, this thing is... Let's go! <laughs> Try that clutchless upshift. Oh, this thing's not bad at 60 though. On, on that bike, it's like the, the mirrors are, they rattle proportional to your wrist angle. I can hardly even tell when I pin it. It's like, okay, ready, set, go! <laughs> That's awesome. Let me look at you. Yeah, after the XRL with those giant desert tanks, it feels super weird. The thing looks pretty good though. I, I like the way yours looks from sitting on it. It kind of, it, it really is like an Africa single. It's kind of amusing. <laughs> it's like a baby, it's like a baby adventure bike. And I can totally see why Itchy Boots rides one of these. This bike will take you anywhere. Places that you wouldn't take the XRL, you'll probably try on this. Oh yeah, I mean this thing is, it feels so flickable. See, I've got to pin it to try to catch up up this hill. 54, 5, so downshift until you're at like, I don't know, like 56, 5700 RPMs, and then just go for it. <laughs> it feels good, huh? It's not a crazy amount of power on the highway, but then off-road, that is just, a, that's all you'll ever need. The way sixth gear just, fifth gear, you, you hit this, and you can tell the bike is working. So this is like you're, you're asking it to accelerate or pass, and then you hit sixth, and it's, it feels totally tuned to do this all day. It's so tiny! <laughs> Oh yeah, I mean, it, it, it still kind of feels like the front is a little bit... This thing is pretty sweet, man. I think you're going to ride this thing, and I think it's going to be the first bike that you actually own and really use it, all of it. Lock this thing for a couple years, sell it with like 3,500 miles on it, and then go buy yourself a 701. It'll be a business. In the meantime, you're just gonna have a shitload of fun with very little risk and like 70 miles per gallon. Hey, you wanna go up here? Check out that little, there's like a mine thing up there. You can go up there, I'll be right there. <laughs> Are you saying you don't wanna? 
<laughs> go up that on this. Yeah. Oh, the, and this thing is so tall, which is so just super nice. The view from up here is pretty cool. On a super clear day, you could just see forever. Yeah, for sure. I'm going to get a photo of this thing right here because I think it's a cool spot. You're in on this one, so put that bike in a cool spot. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I've been wondering what this was. It's like a retaining wall structure and then there's a hole that was designed obviously in the roof. So that makes me think that they used it to mine something and like fill cars or trucks here. I need some airflow. <laughs> we'll go back down this hill right here. Let's go! <sighs> Just call me Dust Cloud. Jeez. Oh, Alright, we're about to come down, hit the pavement, and then we'll take a left to Bickleton. I'm checking that out. Damn. Yeah. I bet you it slipped. I bet it slipped a rim, dude. Nice. I even caught that on camera. Well, we might not go as far today as we were thinking. <laughs> Check back in. This rear tire is turning out to be a pain in my ass. <laughs> Just riding along. Just blew out on me right there. The back end kicked out like six or eight inches. <clears throat> we were headed to Bickleton, but now the plan is to go the other way. Get this thing taken home where I can actually put the correct size tube in it, which will be a good idea. this speed, this is 19 miles an hour, but that back end is just wobbling. I want you to come get close and tell me like, is the rim coming off the tire at all or is it just squishing back and forth within the tire? This pace is gonna take forever to do anything, but I think I could get to Sunnyside like this. Well, sorry dude, jeez. Oh, getting that drift on. <laughs> it definitely is. It feels like your rear end is on ice. But then it's like, it, it slips and then it's like the rubber is catching it, I guess. I'm honestly, I'm not sure how this doesn't walk out of the rim. Oh, oh. It feels like I'm drifting everywhere. <laughs> Great. Well, we'll see how far we can go this way. We're, we're going straight, but the bike doesn't know how to balance currently. <laughs> the last two times I've really taken this out, now I've had flat tires on the rear. It's not like I had two flats. I really had a flat and a side effect. 
man, we came down from all the way over there, up that mountainside. Surprising how much distance you can still cover in limp mode. We've only got a few more miles though now. Shout out to Desert Valley Power Sports. They were able to squeeze me in, get my rear tires sorted out for me.